Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So this is part nine of my visit to um, Click Antiques in Northampton and it is the final part. And it's an epic, it's an epic of epicness in that um, I found a piece of glass that could potentially be the most expensive thing that I found, just blurbling around as in, I didn't know what this was. And I been able to identify a couple of pieces that I wasn't able to identify earlier in the videos. So something in part one and something in part eight. And I'm also going to show you something I did buy from there as well, which was not glass, but it was kind of like glass, but not glass. So, um, yeah, with that said, um, let's get on with the video. It says French Art Nouveau. I've not seen this before. It's a very Art Nouveau shape, but um, yeah, I don't recognize it. Looking at um, kralikglass.com, and yeah, so the shape of that vase is, I, th I believe, this shape here. Um, let's click on one of these, this one here. Um, I don't know. It is this shape. They're not all exactly the same, if I click that one. But this one here, this one's probably closer, maybe. It's a little bit shorter, but this top piece is the same. Yeah. Um, so I think it's Kralik. Kralik do, even in these, you've got four examples of this hyacinth shape, and you can see, look, they're all very different from each other. Look at this one. And then you've got this one, which has got metal fittings on it. And uh, another completely different texture. So it's not, wouldn't be unheard of for them all to be Kralik um, because, you know, although these are all very similar shapes, not all exactly the same. And the text on them are very different from each other. So I think there's a strong possibility it's probably sort of like circa, you know, 1900 is how you'd probably put it, and um, that it's made by Kralik. There are some other interesting bits and pieces of glass. Medina, Phoenician. Let me see. Oh, I need to scroll back out again. There we go. I've got Medina seahorse, typical shape this time. Um, Phoenician vase. Right. Signed and sticker. Never seen that before. Little Medina bird. That's quite cute. Um, Metapha bars. Not seen that ID before. Metapha fish. Um, usually very stripy things are um, Chinese, but not in this case. But this is interesting. And there's two pieces by this lady. Um, I think it were was Zinniak. See if I can get in there. Hang on, I know. Zoom, 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 zoom. Polish glass. That is very interesting. Um, I will try and find that. There's a few interesting bits in that clip, and I'm going to start with the um, Medina glass bird. And um, yeah, so this is one with a label on, on eBay for 18 pounds, buy it now, which seems, yeah, that's okay. And then there's this one, which is on um, Etsy. It's sold, this is actually closer, this pattern here is closer to what we were looking at. Um, yeah, so, and then interestingly, I found these, which this one's even, this pattern on this one is even close to what we're looking at, but it's like a two-in-one bird. It's two birds squidged into one. Hang on, if I show you underneath, you can see it's signed, but you can see it's like two-in-one. So yeah, um, as I've not seen these birds before really, or I've not noticed them anyway, um, 
but I'm going to be keeping an eye open for them for now just just to see how common they are but yeah they they're quite cute I think I'd have spotted them um, so nobody I mean they know everybody knows it's Medina they this I mean this one gives you a massive blurb about Medina but nothing specific about this bird so yeah it is what it is so I thought the next thing I'd look at that was there was this um, Matafa fish because I've not seen one of those before and um, looking on here they're not that common either um, yeah because if you I mean there's a few here on eBay and Etsy um, if you go scroll down they you know there's like one there and that's you know that's where it ends it seems so yeah they're not there's not loads of them floating around uh, sorry that's not a anyway um, just thought I'd look at some prices um, this one's eBay buy it now 16 pounds this is the closest one to what we're looking at in shape and form it's 12 pounds buy it now so they're not expensive things um, I did try to look at sold ones and um, yeah this this confirms that they're not common they're just they're just not there so yeah um, so yeah that's the next thing so those Matafa fish not common fish at all um, not valuable because unless people start collecting them they're not going to get valuable the last piece uh, from that clip I was going to look at is this um, that vase at the back the brown one with the patterns in it um, by Ewa Warizniak I presume that's how you pronounce it I'm not going to say it again anyway um, she has her own website and she's a lecturer in fine art and glass making I think um, ceramics and glass and um, she's living in Essex she's from Poland originally it's given all a little bit of a background on her here this is her own website got a little contact here um, there you go tells you where she is she's got a studio in Essex and she's teaching at a couple of universities and um, yeah it shows some of the work that she's doing now um, and it appears to be cast and it's not cheap look at this piece here crossing the Rubicon sand cast glass ground and polished blah 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 2400 pounds um, another piece private collection doesn't say doesn't say but yeah the only piece that's oh there's another one 2400 pounds for this piece so looks like some of her special pieces make big money if she's actually selling them but some of these are sold it looks like because they're saying they're in private collection so she is actually selling things um, so yeah very interesting um, this is all individual stuff I'm, I'm not from my point of view that's not what I'm about for this video for these videos I'm trying to show you things um, that you can find but yeah but I mean if we go back to the top uh, da, da, da. she's got cast glass fused glass um, then she's got courses so she's teaching and you can get yourself on a course uh, exhibitions so yeah she's she's an active artist and 35 pounds seems very cheap for something that is probably real art glass that you're not going to go out and find another one because it's not from a factory as such so yeah very interesting I think that's a bit of a bargain 35 pounds um, but I don't know what its real price would be because it's a one-off yeah that's the problem you have um, bargain how much would someone buy it blah 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 yeah um, but anyway it is interesting this lady's still out there she's active she's making glass and doing all sorts of weirdy arty things but not vases like that not blown pieces so interesting 
whole bunch of stuff that I don't recognize, but look at the dish in the back, a piece of American um, carnival glass. That's an interesting one. It'd be interesting, to, well, they got it, 95 pounds. Whoa, whoa. So it'd be interesting to see what, what they charge for it in America. So I found the, the, the plate here on David Dotty's Carnival Glass website. And here it is, it's peacocks. I think it's actually peacocks on a fence or something like that uh, by Northwood. Here it is, peacocks on the fence. So, peacock bowls have been faked. Anyway, um, I found it he here, I think it's this one. Yeah, so, here it is, um, it's $300, does he say how old it is? And, uh, no, he doesn't. So, most of these are early 1900s though, that's what he normally says. Um, he says it's very highly collectible. Now, 95 pounds is the most I've ever seen. Um, for a piece of American uh, carnival glass in the UK. It seems a huge amount, um, but it is quite nice. $300 in the States, so it's about $100 in the States, so it's a third of the price that's on here. Still, normally it would be even cheaper than that. Normally, it doesn't seem to matter normally. Um, you know something like that would be like 20 30 pounds at most so yeah it seems strange but um yeah it's 95 pounds but if you were going to sell it in the states if you put it on ebay you might get more for it because it would be worth shipping it um to the states if you were going to get 95 if you would you could get your 95 pounds put the postage on this on top and it would still be cheap in the states Filming in here, hopefully my battery's not going to die before I finish. Got a couple of pieces that are interesting. This yellow one here with the black rim, this orange one with the white rim. They look quite interesting. I think they're Czech. And I will go through some of my, um, through the Kralik website, I think. Well, they might be on there. And um, we'll see if we can pull out who made those. Looking at um, 20th century glass here. And yeah, so the orange vase with the white rim, we'll look at that one first because it's here. This is exactly the same shape. And they're saying it's a known shape made by Franz Wald. So I'll just go in and have a quick shifty at it. Um, technique developed by Lowitz around 1914. He's not giving an exact date, but must be post that. Are there more pictures? No, nope. that's the pictures we've got on this one. You can see it's actually cased. So it's clear over orange, because you can see a clear bit at the bottom there. And you've got this white rim. Now, let me go back a page. The, the yellow one with the black rim was a different shape. As we go down, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, there's a lot here. It's like this one here. It just comes out of the bottom like this. However, for this one, yeah, he doesn't know. He's saying probably by Veltz or Kralik. So, yeah, it is what it is. Um, and that one is saying 1930s. So, anyway, so they're both Czech. One of them's definitely. Uh, Franz Vels and the other one is a um, Vels or Kralik. So there we go. Another piece of expensive um, American carnival glass here with a butterfly on it and uh, tulips. Never seen that before. He's looking for 75 pounds. It'd be interesting to see um, how much that sells for America. So here we are looking at another expensive piece of um, 
American Carnival glass. This piece is £75. Here it is in um, David Dotty's Carnival glass website. And um, yeah, it's here. And so it's Butterfly and Tulip by Duggan. Now, I did try to find it in the Carnival glass website to see if, how much it would sell for, if there was a date or anything. And there was none in there, which surprised me a little bit. Um, so I did a bit more searching and I found this lovely stuff that makes a big deal of this pattern, it seems. Showing you lots of examples and yeah, like it's something special apparently. So, 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 so. Did an image search and I found one that was for sale. That, this is a shocker. This is a shocker. Yeah, it's Etsy. I know Etsy's usually overpriced, but two and a half thousand pounds. Well, more than two and a half thousand pounds. I mean, it's come down in price. You know, they've, they've come down like 900 pounds. Yeah, bargain. Um, what the hell? What can I say? This bowl has sold at auction for as much as $8,000 recently. Don't miss out. What the hell? Now, I did say that American Carnival glass is a bit different. The prices can be really different to they are in the UK, but this is craziness. Yeah, people clearly want this piece. Um, and uh, yeah, never seen that before. So, hmm, I wonder if Click Antiques would post it to America. Anyway, they don't normally, but um, hmm. So anyway, um, that's that one. I've seen these bells before. I think this is Stozzle from Czech Republic, so it's pre-war. We will um, try and find it. Looking at the 20th Century Glass website, I've done a lot of looking for that blue bowl with the two blobbies on it. And this is what was in my head. Um, you can see it's a blue bowl. It's got twin blobbies like this, like the ones that we were looking at. Let me make that bigger. There you go. But it doesn't have the same panels. The rest of the bowl is different. And all the other things in this shape don't have those same panels. So yeah, it's not this. It's someone that's similar. And I've looked at all the usual suspects, including the UK ones, and I can't find it. So it might be Stossel still. The colour looks right. But um, yeah, it's definitely, I'm pretty certain it's a pre-war piece like this. Yeah, 1930s. Um, there's no catalogues for Stossel. So that just completely blocks that, that, you know, rabbit hole that I could drop into. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I think it's, it, it looks Czech or, or German, I think, but I can't pin it down. Back in the dark days of part one, I found this um, art glass bottle and um, someone's bought it and now it's appeared on eBay with a name on it. But let me remind you of the bottle first. I'll, I'll play a little bit and then we'll go and have a look at what, what they, they're selling. I think that's enough of that. So um, yeah, so let's go and have a look at um, what, I, what I was looking at. Here it is. Um, these people are in Northampton, so yep. Yeah. And yeah, I found there is someone 
who knows a bit about glass in Northampton. I don't know who they are, but they clearly do. And they've listed it as Vas Vitrium Glassworks Sweden Biomorphic Iridescent Glass Craft. Never heard of Vas Vitrium before, but dun, 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 they're still going. Yes. So, and this is their website. I just punted into the art glass and um, yeah they're this this is the section art glass section and yeah they're quite a funky little number um so twenty five thousand. yeah these things are not cheap this is krona swedish krona um i think twenty five thousand is you have to take a hundred off it i think i'm not sure so it's 250 i think or is it two and a half thousand pounds thousand pounds i think it's two and a half thousand pounds so yeah but these are individual items i think so yeah they're not cheap they also have things like vases uh, there you go yeah and if you go taking a knot off these then their prices are looking more like like you'd expect them to be so yeah then they're, they're not cheap um and they are still going so at least that's something because there's not that many of the you know the mass of swedish glass makers still going today but this one is so another piece that i've been able to identify before we wind this up is um this bowl here let's have pick it i picked it up and had a look at it so you can see what it is So that's that and then I have found it here it is it's um this is 20th century glass website and it's by August Walther and Zon um, a German company made in the 1930s and this is in a different color but it is the same basket exactly the same um, just a picture of the bottom not really a good one there but you can see the swirl on the bottom there. So yeah, that's what um, that one is. It says there's a product catalog from 1935. I wonder where that is. Anyway, that's what it is. Yeah, I've come outside to show you something. Well, out of my pit, I'm still in the house, but um, I thought, yeah, I don't need a clear background for this because it's not glass. And, um, and I'm gonna show you before I close up, um, the the carafe that i bought it's this one here dun, dun, dun. so this is made by whatcom i think that's w-o-t-c-o-m-b-e um and i believe it's a christopher dresser design the actual motif on it is kind of something like a greeky kind of etruscan um design don't know if make it focus on that focus on that there we go so you can see they're charging around and here's the guy that's getting fought with um it's got a couple of little rings applied rings on the neck or molded a little pouring lip there should be um a stopper for this and it just sit inserts and sits in and some of them are like a dome and some of them are like little flat bits that go up in little small rings um and this will be from probably from the something like the 1880s and um yeah you can see there's nothing on the base and it's a water cooler so the idea is that the outside would sweat evaporate off and um so your water inside would stay cool it comes with a little little plate that's got nothing on it either um, and the idea of having the plate is that obviously the outside of this is sweating and if it's sitting on your table um, it's going to sweat into your table and make a mark so yeah so that's what i bought um, and i'm a fan of christopher dresser um, there's no hard association between christopher dresser and whatcom 
only or Whatcom, I suppose you might want to say, I might be over pronouncing that. Um, only some of the stuff they was doing, they were doing were co exact copies of some of the other metalware and things like that, that that he was doing for them. So everybody's assuming that he had some association. Um, either that or they were just blatantly copying his designs. Um, so yeah, anyway, so that's what that is. Uh, and I bought it because I really like Christopher Dresser. If you look at my website in the manufacturing section, there is a bit on Christopher Dresser and eventually um, this will probably appear in it. So yeah. We'll go back to the pit now to close up. So I hope you like that. So with regard to the Duggan butterfly and tulip bowl. So I did take some advice on that. Mm. Right now it has a tiny chip on it. That's about three centimeters millimeters by two millimeters tiny, but I've been told that massively affects the price. Um, like 95% of the price is gone. Um, so yeah, but it's still a very rare thing, I think, because it's not in the carnival glass sold section. So carnival glass, that's where I go to look at the prices and things, um, the website, and the, it's not just the stuff they're selling today. They've got histories of everything they've sold and that that bowl is not in there so yeah to, uh, it kind of like goes with the story i've been telling you all along about the price difference between american glass in america and here um, the carnival glass some of it can be you know 20 quid here 200 dollars in america yeah that's a big difference so um with that said i think i'm gonna wrap up with click antiques now um I will be going back because it's my nearest, isn't it? And um, so what have I got to say? Yes, all the references I use will be in the description below. Um, all the contact details for Click Antiques will be in the description below. And please remember to like and subscribe. I will be making more videos. I need to ring someone up and ask them if I can come and visit them next week. Start a new out and about. And yeah, so thank you for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing if you have done that and have a good night. Good night.